Andrew, what is different about today's protest? I know it's a public holiday. There are more people attending. Has the tone changed? Is it still that festival-like atmosphere you were describing for us yesterday? Yeah, on the streets, I think it's still pretty calm and, and relatively festive. Uh, one of the student leaders just was speaking to the press a little while ago, and he seems to be trying to ratchet up the pressure a little bit, basically saying if the chief executive, Lung, uh, didn't resign by tomorrow, that the students plan to escalate the protests. Previously, they hadn't really said how. Now they're saying they may uh, surround his official residence, which would move it closer to Central again. Uh, the business district, that is, and also possibly try to occupy government buildings. That would clearly set off some kind of uh, confrontation with the police. Right. So, so there's uh, a hard deadline know, that, in that's place. That's what they're here. saying now, but. Yeah, but they, you know, they said yesterday that today was the deadline. They're, they're not necessarily speaking with one voice, and I think you know they had no way of knowing how big this was going to get, and I'm not quite sure if they really know how to get out of this situation either. As the protests have gotten larger, especially today and into tomorrow, which is another public holiday, do you see the agenda changing? Have the student leaders changed what they want? You know, I, I think their goals haven't changed. I think they're trying to figure out how to achieve them, and it's not easy. I mean, the main goal is to get Beijing to back down on its plans to vet the candidates for the, the chief executive position here when there are elections in 2017. Beijing's position is, hey, we're giving you elections. Hong Kong has never had an election, not under the British, and, and not under the, the post-handover period. Mm -hmm. And they are offering elections. Everyone can vote, but they're saying we're going to decide who the candidates are, more or less. There's a screening committee, but everyone expects that that committee would be pretty favorable to Beijing in choosing the candidates. What can you tell us about the student leaders here? Because it's a marked difference from uh, movements in the past where you had the Martin Lees, the Emily Laos leading the way here. Now you have 17-year-old and 18-year-old children, some might say, uh, calling the shots. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's very interesting to see how quickly this got out of the hands of Occupy Central, which was the, the more established protest group that had planned to move into Central today and tomorrow and then basically go home. And uh, the students have really gotten out of front of this. A lot of it had to do with the police reaction and using the tear gas. But, you know, they're students. They're 17. They don't have a lot of experience running uh, an organization, let alone a group as big as this, where, where the numbers now are topping, easily topping 100,000 possibly 150,000 last night mm -hmm. and who knows what it'll get to tonight and tomorrow uh, yeah. it's you know these guys are young kids and they and they're they're wrestling an elephant now they are andrew um, martin lee was talking to us yesterday and telling us about how beijing had to be behind the tear gassing of protesters do you see any evidence that the pla or chinese soldiers chinese authorities are out there no i mean i suspect they're out there i'm sure there are planes Plain Coast people observing this. This is, you know, something on this scale. I'm sure they're out there, but no, they, you know, since the incident with the tear gas, the police have almost been invisible. Um, yeah, they're there providing public safety, but really at a distance, uh, which is one of the things I think that's ratcheted down the tension so much is just not this police presence, let alone riot police. There, you don't see any riot police at all now. Mm -hmm. uh, is there evidence? You know, I heard Martin say that, that a decision like that couldn't be made without Beijing's knowledge and wouldn't be made without Beijing's knowledge. You know, it's hard for me to say. You would think that they've been preparing for this confrontation. Uh, everyone knew it was coming, maybe not on this scale, but everyone knew that this week the, the Occupy was going to happen. So the police had been preparing for it. Uh, if they were going to go out and use tear gas, it, it must have been discussed in advance. Right. How high those discussions went, I, I don't know. Andrew, what is different about today's protest? I know it's a public holiday. There are more people attending. Has the tone changed? Is it still that festival-like atmosphere you were describing for us yesterday? Yeah, on the streets, I think it's still pretty calm and, and relatively festive. Uh, one of the student leaders just was speaking to the press a little while ago, and he seems to be trying to ratchet up the pressure a little bit, basically saying if the chief executive, Lung, uh, didn't resign by tomorrow, that the students plan to escalate the protests. Previously, they hadn't really said how. Now they're saying they may uh, surround his official residence, which would move it closer to Central again. Uh, the business district, that is, and also possibly try to occupy government buildings, that would clearly set off some kind of uh, confrontation with the police. Right, so, so there's uh, a hard deadline know, that, in that's place That's what they're here. saying now, but... 
Yeah, but they, you know, they said yesterday that today was the deadline. They're, they're not necessarily speaking with one voice, and I think 